Hi friends, Mrs. McBride here, coming to you straight from room 219. Um, I'm happy to say that we're on to our next topic here. So, excitingly, we're moving on to chapter three, vectors. Now, what we're talking about today should all be review from what you learned last year. We're definitely gonna kick it up a notch, but we're probably not gonna do that until tomorrow. So I just wanna make sure that everybody has a good foundation in terms of where we are starting, all right? So, first thing when we're talking about vectors is we should probably figure out what is a vector. So a vector sometimes is compared with a scalar, right? So a scalar is any quantity with magnitude only. I'm hoping that you are writing down these notes as I go along in your notebook, all right? So a scalar is any quantity that has magnitude only. A vector is a quantity with both magnitude and direction, okay? So again, remember the word magnitude means how much. Like we normally hear the word magnitude when we're talking about the magnitude of an earthquake. It's looking for the size or the how much of an earthquake, right? It's not necessarily looking for anything else. So a scalar is talking about how much or something that only wants to know the amount. Okay, so I would say some common examples of scalars might be temperature or energy or mass or time. Okay, all of those things are talking about the how much. Wouldn't it be great if your mass was different in a specific direction? Like you only weigh 100 pounds going north, but 200 pounds going south. Like it doesn't make any sense that you would say that. That's how we know that mass is a scalar, okay? Now the vectors, last year I gave you um, a way to remember vectors. Hopefully you remember this, but I said that vectors are remembered by forever at the DMV forever at the DMV. That's how I always remember vectors. And the vectors here, these are the most common ones. F is for force, A is for acceleration, D is for displacement, M is for momentum, and V is for velocity. Okay, remember like displacement, we know that distance is a scalar. The distance I travel is like what my odometer reads. The displacement is how far away I am from start to finish. We already talked about these this year, right? And velocity, that's telling me how fast I'm going and in which direction, whereas speed is only telling me how fast I'm going, the how much, not necessarily the direction like the velocity. Okay, hopefully that was a good review of what is a vector uh, and what is a scalar. So we're talking specifically about vectors here. And the first thing I wanna do is some brief review of components. Okay. So if I take any particular vector, here's my vector. Okay, I know that this is a vector because it has a specific magnitude or size and it's pointing in a direction. Now, I'm hoping you would say like, remember this is the zero degrees here, okay? So you might be saying, hey, this particular vector is pointing in a 45 degree angle or at a, deg a direction of 45 degrees. Okay, now if I move this, you might be saying, okay, that vector has the same magnitude, but now it's pointing in a direction of 90 degrees, okay? And so forth, if we move this over here, okay, we're always measuring from the positive x-axis, or in this case, from my pen, and you might say, okay, well, if this is 90, then maybe that is, I don't know, 120. Okay, and so on until you get all the way over here where this would be 180 and you can, you can sort of follow the pattern, okay? Now, a vector, 
we could measure its length to figure out what its magnitude is, and we could use a protractor to measure its direction. And we're gonna do that um, in class tomorrow. Sometimes it's pretty annoying to figure out what angle this is at. So what is easier is if we use vector components. Now what components are, is these are pieces of the vector that we can place in the north, south, east, west direction um, that will sort of get us to the same direction as the vector, but sort of taking the long way, right? So I would say that this particular vector points to the top right of my paper, okay? So instead of trying to figure out exactly what angle this is and exactly what direction, I'm saying, hmm, instead I could go this far to the right and this far north, I could find its components, um, which would be easier to walk, right? So it would be easier to walk this way because those are sort of at 90 degree angles than trying to walk in this particular direction. I hope that makes sense. All right, so these orange ones, these are called components and we can find vector components by using the following equations, okay? So to find the X component of any vector, again, hopefully this is all review from last year, you use the formula A cosine of theta. And to find the y component of any vector, we use our a sine of theta. Okay, so what does this look like? I'm gonna write a couple more things over here, so leave that space blank. Well, let's say for example, I do take my green vector that I had here, right? And I say, well, this vector actually has a length, so let's call vector a. And let's say that it has a length of three inches at 30 degrees. Okay, and I wanna know what are my X and Y components. Okay, so if I just put these vectors out here, it looks to me like the X component is gonna be larger than the Y component. Okay, well, let's calculate. So to find the x component of any vector, I take its magnitude, so in this case it's three, and I multiply by the cosine of the angle. So if I take my calculator, I get three cosine of 30, and in this case, I'm gonna round up and say that this is 2.6 inches. And then I can find the y component of this vector by doing three sine of 30, okay? And I get 1.5. So what I was expecting in terms of the x component to be longer than the y component, I actually got that. So that makes sense to me. I'm feeling good about that. All right, so we could do this for any number of vectors. Now, the other thing you need to think about is, let's say, for example, I take and I point this vector. We'll now call this vector B. And I say, okay, well, it's still three inches, but in this case, I'm gonna point it at 160 degrees. Okay, right, so it's if this is my zero, and this is my 180, we're here in 160. So when I go and I have put in my components again, do you see how the component in the X direction is pointing in the negative direction, whereas the Y is still pointing in the positive direction? These are things that you should notice and be ready to do, right? So when I find vector B in the X, and vector B in the Y, I'm expecting my X to be negative. Okay, so again, if I do three cosine of 160, ooh, great, I get negative 2.82. Perfect, just like what I expected. And similarly, if I do three sine of 160, I get 1.02. So that makes sense to me both visually and, and mathematically that this is negative and larger and this is positive and smaller, okay? Now sometimes they give you the opposite of these, right? Where they give you the components and they want you to find the magnitude and direction, right? So we would use this 
This is just a fancy form of the Pythagorean theorem that says if I take the x component and square it plus the y component and square it, I take the square root, I should be able to get the hypotenuse of the triangle. And last but not least, everybody's least favorite, I can find the angle by using the inverse tangent of AY over AX. All right, now a couple of things. When we've been home in quarantine, this has been a hot mess. This needs to be in degrees, okay? If you are using your phone calculator, make sure that you're putting your phone in degree mode, okay? Whatever calculator you're using, make sure that's in degrees or you're going to get something pretty crazy. All right, so let's say for example, we here have um, two sets of components. So let's say CX is five and CY is seven. And I wanna know what is the magnitude and direction. Okay, so for the first thing I'm going to do to find vector C, remember I take the square root of five squared plus seven squared, okay? All right, and I get 8.6. So vector C, put it down here, has a value of 8.6 meters. Pretend I put the units on there the first time. Okay, now we wanna figure out the degrees so we can figure out the angle, right? So I'm gonna take the inverse tangent of my Y over my X, okay? So in this case, I do the inverse tangent of y over x, okay, and I get 54 point, let's say five, okay? All right, one more here, and we've got vector d, okay, so I'm gonna have dx and dy. Right. Um, let's say now, instead, what if these are negative, okay? Let's say instead I have negative four and negative 14. I'm getting wild here. So first thing you need to say to yourself is, if I just sketch this, negative four in the x direction is like this, and negative 14 in the y direction is like this. So for me, I'm expecting something in the third quadrant, meaning if this is zero, and this is 90, and this is 180, 270, I'm expecting an angle between 180 and 270. So if I don't get that, I'm, I'm gonna be worried. To find the magnitude, I take the square root. Now remember, when you're doing this, you gotta do this one of two ways. Either write it like this with parentheses, right? So I'm going to parentheses negative four, parentheses squared, or, just know that when you square a negative number, it's going to come out positive. So however way you decide to do it, I like to do it this way because I'm not even gonna worry about having to put the parentheses in there. So when I'm putting this into my calculator, I'm just doing the square root of four squared plus 14 squared. Okay, or I'm getting 14.6, geez, I did it again, meters at some angle. Okay, now that angle, again, we're gonna take the inverse tangent of y over x. So I'm gonna take the inverse tangent of negative 14 over negative four. Okay, so I get an answer of 74. Let's just use 74 here for a second. Okay, so 74 would be my angle, but hold the phone here. 74 is over here. I know my angle should be over here, right? But my calculator is not sure if I want this in the first or in the third quadrant. You remember doing this? All students take calculus. 
Okay, so like in the first and third quadrant, the tangent is positive. So the calculator doesn't know if I want this angle or this angle. So it just, you know, picks the smallest one. So in order to fix this, I need to add 180 to my angle. I'm always going to add 180 to fix this if it's not the correct answer, okay? So again, adding 180 is the most appropriate thing to do here because I know that my angle is between 180 and 270, okay? All right, friends. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna keep going. There is uh, some more notes on adding vectors, um, and then you're going to do a practice on the Google form. So what I would ask you to do now is watch the second video. See you in a second.